Let's get straight into our next, uh, our first discussion for the day now. Nigeria's Finance Minister Kemi Adoshun says the federal government has engaged a global investigation agency to trace illicit funds originating from Nigeria to different parts of the world. Adoshun stated this during her address to the Nigerian Stock Exchange at Bloomberg CEO Roundtable in Lagos over the weekend. The minister said the illicit flow of funds out of Nigeria was harming the country, adding that it deprived the government of funds to finance developmental projects. Now, meanwhile, acting president Yemi Oshibajo has called for the persecution of banks and other financial institutions holding illicit funds. Now, according to Oshibajo, the transfer of illicit funds cannot happen without a handshake between the countries where the funds are transferred from and financial institutions and countries to which the assets are transferred. Right. Very well. <laughs> okay, joining us to discuss this is the Executive Director of the Social Economic Rights Accountability Project, Serap Adetokumbo Mumuni. It's good to have you join us right now. It's a pleasure. Good, good morning. Good morning. Right. Now, this is not the first time anyone is hearing about uh, funds being transferred to banks or offshore accounts and even to private uh, uh, houses, as the case may be, outside of this country. What's making this call new? You see, the problem in Nigeria is that when you discuss problems that are so germane to Nigeria, mm. it is as if you are dialoguing with the deaf. So you, the, the, the other thing is for you to be despondent about that. I have said this, and I'm tired of saying it. But in, 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 in matters relating to national problems, you cannot be too tired of repeating it many times. All we want is sufficient goodwill to take all these um, what to action so that we'll see results. Okay, but this is not the first time, like she, she rightly mentioned, yes, yes. Uh, we had an agreement with the U.S., I think sometime 2015, yes. uh, before Obama left uh, the seat with John Kerry, and we had an agreement that, okay, the U.S. was going to help us trace some of our stolen funds and help them get them back to Nigeria. But, but we've not really seen that happen the, that much. The truth of the matter is that uh, my own perception of the advanced world is like um, they can never be serious when it comes to problem of third world countries. For example, I was part of a delegation that met John Kerry at the United, uh, United States Embassy in Abuja when he came there the other time. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what my concern was, was when are we receiving our money? And he started telling me that, um, you know, accountants have to sit, lawyers have to sit, uh, and, and, and platforms have to be created to ensure the return. I said no. There is already a platform known as United Nations Convention Against Corruption, which your country and our country have signed. Yes, yes one, two principal things were mentioned in that convention. One, asset recovery. Two, international cooperation. So you cannot just be telling me now that there will be a, a new platform to be created. A platform already exists. What is needed is deliberate action to effect it. He said, okay, we'll, we'll get to it. That's mm -hmm. what he told me. Okay, we'll get into all of this to understand it more because uh, there are so many dimensions to this issue. But let's go out on TVC Entertainment. The viewers there can now switch over to uh, watch the program and follow what we're doing here on DSTV Channel 418 and Go TV Channel 45. Free TV, it is uh, 701, start at 270 and start times 307. Join us again. Right, if you're just joining us, you're watching TVC Breakfast, and we are discussing efforts by the federal government of Nigeria to trace all the illicit funds from Nigeria that are resting in banks, in accounts, and even in the homes of so many people across the world. On the outside, one hand. On the one hand. Outside on the other hand, this, is uh, the invasion of taxes, mm. how you take our money out of here and you refuse to pay your taxes here in the country. All right, certainly. We'll talk about, we're talking about all of that. And we have with us uh, the, um, the Executive Director of Social Economic uh, Rights Accountability Project. It's called SERAP, Adetokumbo Mumuni, in the house right now. Now, uh, Adetokumbo, let's, let's come into this issue. The, concept, like the, vice, the acting president has said that the banks certainly cannot be exonerated out of this whole mix. But from your perspective, how 
accomplice? Uh, 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 how, how involved are the banks in all of this kind of rackets that go on? Uh, I was part of a program mm. organized by the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption about two weeks ago. And a lot of people are there. Mm. And the ringing suggestion is that unless you deal with professionals, bankers, mm. auditors, lawyers, who know how to manipulate yeah, yeah, because, the because nobody would engage in what you call illicit transfer of outflow funds without these three groups, accountant, bankers, lawyers. You see, you don't just, you don't just deal with the substantive criminals. You also deal with their accomplices. Mm. And it was a suggestion that things have to be done to deal with these people too. And that is why I agree with the call of the vice president that um, I'm the acting president, that we must look at banks. That is one leg of the professionals. We, almost, we, almost, we must also look at lawyers. We must also look at estate agents who purchase property. For example, a civil servant that you know has been all his life a civil servant asks you to go and buy property of 100 million at Maitama or Banana Island. You should know, it should suggest to you that this money that is being given to the of property cannot meet the mm -hmm. normal legal salaries of the person who is sending you. Over and the should, years. Over the years, mm -hmm. even if he didn't spend anything. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. there is, I don't think there is anyhow a civil servant, even if he spent 35 e years. Except if he has a private business, if, but that, that has to but be traced. But the truth of the matter mm -hmm. is that no civil servant should have a private business. Why have been a civil servant? That is the law in Nigeria. Okay. The only type of business you can have is farming. When Obasanjo introduced mm. Operation Feed the Nation in those days, he allowed, he allowed because we were talking about. Except if you are very prosperous in Yes. <laughs> but you have to, you see. But, but is, that, is, that law, is that law humane at all to say civil servants should do some other kind of side business to keep, uh, make ends meet, even with this day that some of them are being owed 13, 18 months of salary? Is that will they survive? Uh, that is why we say for you to make a law. You have to create the environment that will make the law functional and mm. operative. You see, like like I continue to see, like our organization continue to see, we have to solve economic existential problems first, yeah. so that the desire to steal, desire to embezzle, will be, be as attractive. It won't be attractive mm. because if you give a civil servant a salary that will not take him home, so that that means you are creating avenues and situations for rogues. The Nigerian government is trying, making efforts, and this time around inviting or employing a private firm investigator to go after this money and get them back to the country. With us in the studio is uh, the Economic Right Accountability Project. That's uh, uh, one of their top short. Uh, Sarah Adeto Kumbamumuni is very much here with us in the studio. So we're talking about this money faring out of the country, but in cohort with the workings of uh, bank Something operators, yes. estate agent. Do you want to yes. wrap up on that point? Yes, what, what, what I was saying now, which the position that I maintain is that uh, unless these other accomplices mm. are dealt with once, for example, a government official or any person is found to have transferred money. You see, in the criminal code in Southern Nigeria and the penal code in Northern Nigeria, there is what you call participants criminis. Hmm. parties to offenses uh, and the, the law is that a person who commits an offense is equally guilty with the person who assisted him if the person will be sentenced to 10 years the person who acted in court with him will also be sentenced to 10 years so we call them parties to offense okay so once you have you have identified somebody who has done that and you make for that investigation and you see that lawyers bankers estate agents are in cohort within, then you take them up as part of the offense so that you prosecute them together and they'll be entitled to the same punishment. Mm -hmm. All right. When it, uh, one of the um, issues the, the, the federal government brought up when they started this in, the inception of this administration was the issue of the bank verification number. Yes. How has that helped in tracing some of these funds as to who is responsible for what and, on, and all of that? You see, the BVN mm. will only link one person and all his accounts together. Mm. The, the, the BVN will not tell you who assisted him. Because the way, for example, I'm, I'm a lawyer, I know that the way properties are dealt with is that 
clients will pay money to a lawyer's account. Mm. So if the lawyer has many accounts, the BVM will relieve that, will reveal that this money got into the account of this person. Mm. But it won't tell you who paid it in. Who paid it in. So that is the, there are, there are things which the DBM will, um, and BVM will work for, but it won't disclose certain other things. But forensic investigation will reveal who assisted and who did not assist in, in the illegal transaction. And that is where we should be going. You see, the way investigations are done in Nigeria, I beg to say that that is not proper investigation. And you see, Nigerian law enforcement agents, police, the FCC, they are too much in a hurry to disclose things. The way it is done abroad is that they will do discreet investigation. They won't come to arrest you first. They will do discreet and they will have gathered all evidence. And when it is sufficient in their opinion to take you on, that is when they come and arrest you. Mm -hmm. So that when you are arrested today, you go to court immediately. Straight. They are, they are, the style in Nigeria is that um, you arrest they arrest, they start making start investigation. Fishing for evidence. No, no, that is not the way And there's no. too much uh, <laughs> media no, no. As, trial. As, as no, no, as, no, no as, as to media trial, mm. I don't believe that there is, media, there is too much media trial. Okay. The concern of Nigeria in section 22 has given the media the responsibility mm. to hold the government accountable to the people. Yeah. So when things of interest happen in the polity, it is the business of the media to highlight it. But, but <laughs> to a great extent, perception is also key. Very well. Because sometimes some people can be innocent, yes. but when they're out there and all, everyone knows, okay, they stole money, but at the end of the day, they are really innocent. That what perception, do do? That's I, they become stigmatized. No, I, I agree with you, but Fine. it is not the evidence that said the media to come. Mm. The media came in to perform its constitutional responsibility, right. which is open society. But you know how our agencies can play to the gallery. Yes, that's what I say. You don't arrest first. Mm. You see, some bombings took place in recent times in London. Before they release to you the name of somebody that has been killed, who happens to be the perpetrator of them, they will have gone into the background to tell you who he was, what he had done in the past. Mm. So sufficient information right. will have been obtained before you say, give the name out. Okay, let's look at the other side of this illicit fund, which has to do with taxes, evasion of yes. taxes. Uh, the Minister of Finance was particularly worried that Nigerians are not paying their taxes, even the wealthy ones. Mm. So how do we get this money back? You, you, you made mention of you being part of one initiative or the other. I said, good. But do we get to see the end of some of those initiatives? I'm saying this in response to the Panama Paper issues. Some Nigerians were indicted. Yes. Well, let, me, let, me, let me tell you, I've always had the constant opinion that Nigeria, Nigeria nation has sufficient criminal law to tackle all our problems. The problem that we have always had is deliberate, effective, and efficient enforcement of the law. You see, tax laws exist. And it will provide penalties for failure to comply. Why are we not enforcing those tax laws? There are people that should be prosecuted for tax offenses. Tax evasion is illegal. You understand? And there are laws in the tax books, in the law of tax, that says if you are, you are, you are due to, to payment of tax and you have not paid it, prosecution should be taken against you. Why are we not exploring that, that angle? You see? Law must be enforced strictly, even-handedly. Not that uh, when it comes to the political opponent of the government of the day, they will look to the other side. Mm -hmm. But when it is a person that they are not too, too disposed towards, they will look right. So when that is not happening, that people like you, civil yes. society organization, are meant to hold the government accountable, even the media, which yes. is perhaps what we are trying to do now. But my, my, my question to you is, you've been part of quite a, a, lo a lot of initiatives. Yes. But we don't see the end of some of those initiatives. You see, you see, the business of holding government accountable belongs to all of us. You see, the citizen, the mass of the people must continue to make noise and ask the government about responsibility, about transparency, about accountability. Putting the right pressures. On yes. You see, when things happen in advanced world, you see people getting interested in it, discussing it. If it didn't happen, they go on the streets, 
peacefully and lawfully to demand that. And you see, they will insist. And until something is done, you won't see that issue run out of the public uh, uh, front burner of public discourse. If you watch whatever happens anywhere, it will continue to be in the news until accountability, responsibility is done. But Nigerians don't have, what I say, this resilient spirit of continuing to demand that things be done and they see that it's done before they leave that issue. You see, news unfold in Nigeria. You understand? By the time we, we, we are on it for about one week and nothing happens, we go to the next. That's not the way it's done. Okay. All right. Now, uh, we, we know that um, my colleague was asking a question earlier on. The government of Nigeria, the president of Nigeria, signed some agreements. In fact, had some agreements with the U.S. Uh, yes. government, had some agreements with the French president, mm -hmm. had some agreements with the British prime minister as uh, uh, towards refunding mm -hmm. and towards ensuring they help Nigeria refund and uh, track all the funds. Now, setting up a new or contracting a new agency to handle that project, wouldn't that be duplication of uh, responsibilities? You see, it depends that? on the content of the agreement they had. Mm. There are certain agreements that are legally binding. There are certain agreements that are binding in principle. And you see, in matters of illicit, illicit transfer of funds, yeah. there are people who have worked all their life in dealing with these matters. So if those agreements are not as binding as they think we thought it was, then bringing in experts on these matters who have worked all their life on this is not too bad. You understand? So it is when the agreement is sound and clearly enforceable mm. that you can say, okay, let's rely but on Nigerians this agreement. are concerned sometimes when these kind of consortium or this kind of contractor sometimes demand for per certain percentages. Sometimes some people can call it even outrageous percentages mm. of the sum they are trying to repatriate. Uh, 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 let me tell you, there are standards in professions. Mm -hmm accountants, lawyers, when you help somebody to recover a particular amount, there are normal standards that you collect as your professional fee. And people, it is also part of the rule that when the money is so much that you recover, it can be negotiated downwards. And we have to be sure that what the government will be doing will not be playing games with us okay. to say to say it is this person that says I want to help, help you to recover and trace. Let me just quickly chip in the a point uh, because we are wrapping up this section right yes. now on the issue of uh, what uh, Mike alluded to last year, throughout yes. last year, Nigeria was able to rake in about 1.2 trillion naira in terms of taxes. Yes. And out of that, 800, uh, 482 billion went into tax consultation for consultant who brought in the money that we raked in 1.2 and we paid 800, uh, 482 billion naira. That's what we paid the consultants who, who raked in this money. Now we are getting private investigators to help us get in money. We don't know what they will bring. Apparently, maybe it might be a penny wise, a pounds oh, foolish please. adventure. You see, I agree with you. Now we should start letting the federal government know that Nigerians will demand for property and accountability, property. For example, you cannot say somebody assisted you to rake in a particular amount, one, okay, one million naira, for instance, and you say you give him 400,000 naira. Mm. It's never done in any civilized environment. Because, you see, when you do things in an environment, you must do it according to international best practices. You don't just decide to fritter public fund away on the altar of, say, somebody assisted you collecting money. Yeah, but in this situation, or in this kind of uh, situation where Nigeria is in recession, it seems the country is very desperate to get funds from all over the place. If, if, the, if the consortium is, uh, is demanding for so much, wouldn't they be... No, but see, what profit is there in from 1.2 and you <laughs> so get that they will almost half of the money? Yeah, but the no, point is me, they have, they have me, half a trillion now. Let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. The government should make investigation. They are... Uh, other people who engage in the same type of work that will collect lesser amounts. Mm. You understand? They they know most of them know where these individuals this know international yes. contractors are. Uh, so it's not as if you are stuck with somebody, one person. 
the, the world is such Except, a... of course, if you dig further, you may realize that some of those officials have some, so some connection with some of those exactly. consultants. Unless you have connection with any person that wants to collect money from government, you won't just free tie away money. And that we have to let the government know that we are watching mm -hmm. and ask questions. Nobody can collect a trillion naira and get so almost half of the money. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It's all right. In, 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 in a way of uh, getting to hold government accountable or hold government to account, what can Nigerians themselves do in this kind of situation? You see, the only thing that it takes for evil and impropriety to continue to prosper or proliferate is for good people not to talk. I want to call on Nigerians to be good people of their nation because the health of the Nigerian nation is the health, will, be, will mean the health of Nigerians. And if you say it does, it's not my business, ultimately it will get to you. And we don't have any other country except Nigeria. And that is why we have to be on perpetual, constant, and continuous watch that things must be better in this country. All right. You must continue to make noise and demand for accountability. All right. Thank you. Executive Director of Social Economic Rights Accountability Project, Serab Adetokumba Mumuni, thank you for coming on the program. It's a pleasure being thank here. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Right.